Today I'm going to make a vase like this with waves on and also I like to have it in the same colors because that is what my son is wishing for. He is turning 30 in January so I would like to make him a nice present. The vase will be bigger than this one. This size. First, I'm wetting the clay, and that can be hard work. It's important to be patient. Going on with rolling out the clay, I'm trying to make a circle out of it. Sometimes there will be a little air bubble, and I will puncture it. Don't want air bubbles in our clay, no, no. Carefully shaping the clay over a bowl making sure that the sides are really nice and down. Cutting off the excessive clay underneath so it will be straight in the bottom and then washing it with a sponge to get it really even, to get this even surface. Now going on with sculpturing, making waves when I have put the clay on and make the waves, then I use a sponge to really shape the waves like I want them. I will let it dry for four days. Today it's my plan to put the two halves together so they become one. This is my top part with the waves on and this is bottom. So let's do it. Remove the ball and the plastic so the ball is ready to work with and it looks nice. And this is the top part. I'm taking the plastic off now. But I will go on and make the rims here so they will be really even at the sides because then they stick together much better. It's easier to put the two halves together if the rims are clean. I will use a sponge with water to soften the rims. Then I can cut down in the clay and add some slip to it after that. And when I've done that, it's ready to stick to the other half. So I will do that both to the top part and also to the bottom part. So now the two halves are prepared to stick together. I have scratched up the rims and put some slip on. So now is the exciting moment where we will put the two halves together. So let's do it. And I can see that the lower part is kind of a little bit bigger right now than the uh, upper part. So I will press the lower part in so it will fit proper, properly. I feel it fits now. So I will go on by making the waves so they go on the second half down so it's like a continuation of waves on the whole bowl here. First I'm moisturing the bowl outside so it can be a little bit sticky to the new clay because there is a few days in between the old what we've made first and and what we are doing now. First before I start the waves I will close the bowl by rolling out some clay and put it into the crack that is between the two halves. Besides being creative with clay, one of my other patients is making qigong and tai chi, like you can see I'm doing here. This form I'm doing here is for the liver and are represented by the green color. 
So when I have worked with the sealing of the two halves together, so I feel like it looks natural at the at the connection of the two half, I will continue by making waves all over the, the ways here. So there is a wave here that I like to continue down. Sculpting wave by wave. I sometimes take myself in being too overactive in my mind, overthinking. And I think we have so many stimuli during the day. So I think that both clay work and Tai Chi both are gift for the soul because they are teaching us the art of being present in the moment and calming the mind. As I shape this clay, I immerse myself in the textile nature of this material and I'm letting go of any distractions. And the same goes for Tai Chi, where these graceful movements flow in harmony with the breath grounding me in the here and now. I think that one of the really good things about Tai Chi is that it is really learning us how to control this monkey mind, this mind of overthinking and being active all the time, this inner dialogue that's continuing talking, chatting inside the head. It's really learning us how to control this. So let's remember to carve out some time for these soul nurturing activities because they hold the power to send us amidst life's chaos. So now I'm satisfied with the shape and with the waves. I continue until I think it looks natural and it still has a really good form all in all. Right now, I'm going to open the ball here so it becomes a waist. Right now, it's totally closed. The thing is, today, the clay is a bit dry, a little bit drier than I'm used to. So I think the opening of the ball will be a little bit challenging. Challenging. <laughs> it will be a challenge. To open the ball, I will make a line so I get a straight line for the opening. And I use a little ball to do that. And the sun is out now. It's really nice. <laughs> Sometimes I walk around to see if it's in the middle all around. I think it is. So I will draw a line around this ball. Trying to keep the same angle all the way around. Now I got the line, I can put it up on my wheel again. Because it's easier to cut the line when the item is on the wheel. And because I feel it's a bit dry, I will take it maybe three times around. Trying to hold my tool in a very horizontal so I get the clean cut. <laughs> yes, and like you can see here, it is kind of a struggle to cut this line this time. And my stick here is bending, you can see it here, because the clay is so hard. So I have changed it and for the first time I'm trying to use this hobby knife and it's really good to use. I can feel that, so that will not be the last time I have learned something new today. So, now I got it. It's time for cleaning up the rims. I don't like any sharp things on this waist, so I'm rounding the, the rim, so it will be really nice and doing it first with the stick and after that i will use a sponge with water to really round it and make it nice and after i've done the rim 
I'm doing the inside of the ball in the connection where the two half meet. I will do the same like on the other side. Now I will leave it for a little while so it can the surface can dry up and I can get some lunch. After this we will paint it with some clay color and that will be quite exciting because it should be a green vase but I'm using a total different color underneath. I will explain you why when I have had lunch. Oh, that was good with something to eat. Now we are going on. We are going to glaze this one. It is supposed to be a green color like this on the top of this one here. But I am going to paint it in red. And I'm doing that because red is the complementary color for green. And it will give the green color a kind of uh, depth. And also it will make the, uh, the color green much more exciting to see, to watch. And it will give the, the touch of this ball here and another um, dimension, I think. I hope. <laughs> but let's see. We are going on with the glazing here in the red color. If you know me, you know I am quite new in all this. So for me, it, everything I make is a new experience, a new way of learning. But if you don't try, you don't learn anything. So. I'm just trying to see where we end. Like you can see the red color is not covering the whole ball. It's it's like transparent here. But I think it's enough. It's enough to give the green color some life. So I will leave it to this. And now it's time for this ball here to dry up. I want it to dry up slowly. First, I will leave it here now for an hour or two until this clay color has been dried up. Then I will wrap it into plastic in my bowl with sand so it is supported underneath so it doesn't lose the shape because it's still kind of wet the clay. The clay. I will leave it under plastic for about one week and then I will take the plastic off. Maybe one time a day, I will take the plastic off, off for an hour or two, so it can dry up a little bit every day. And then after a week, I can take the plastic off and let it dry a little bit quicker. Then I will put it on my radiator, my heater, and then it will dry up so it is really bone dry before i'm firing it in my oven at the 920 degrees and i'm really looking forward to that i always do yes so leave it for now Ta -ta! now it has been described and actually it's still a bit warm so maybe I should wait. Now we are going on. For this purpose, like I said in the beginning, it's going to be green. And for this purpose, I have been, uh, I have bought this one. It's a malachite green. And on the photos, it looks so beautiful. So I am so excited to see how it will turn out. And also, I have this green, uh, greenish granite colors. So I like to see if if we can make some wow effect on the inside of this vase here with these two together. I think we can make magic inside. I will put on the time lapse so you will see the whole process of me uh, glazing this one here oh yeah and in the background here 
You can see my youngest son, he's 14 years. By the time right now where I am recording the sound for this video here, my oldest son has already become 30 years. We have been celebrating his birthday and he has got his present and he got really happy for it. And I understand why, because it turned out really nice. And that you will see in a moment. Here you can see the two colors I have used inside. And I am burning this waste in the kiln in the night time for this recording here. morning light here let's see how it is out here and it says oh we can just have a little quick look now This is so beautiful. Yes, this is the result and I'm quite satisfied. Now you can lean back and have a look at the photos and also there will be a little bit of Tai Chi. Also noticed on the photos how you can see the red color a little bit through the green and how that make a kind of new dimension to this vase here well thank you for being here <laughs>